Somebody will love him for yeah. a yeah. shoot spot, won't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, right. guys. I didn't even touch him yet. I just poked him <laughs> with my finger, not even the needle. Okay. You ready? <laughs> Hey guys, well, as you can see, we had the rams in. Uh, I'll explain that in just a minute, but I want to take one second. If you happen to have purchased one of my sheep record books that I made, and if you don't know what this is, it's a, basically a book that I made is through Amazon, keep track of vaccinations, wormings, and everything else with your sheep. I'll put a link down in the description where you can find this if it interests you. And in case you did already purchase this, well, now I've got a matching phone case. So I've made some phone cases. These are for iPhones or Samsung, either one. That's the two it's for. It's through Amazon again. You can pick them up through there. If you're an Amazon Prime member, free shipping on all of this stuff. I will tell you, in Amazon, it started out with the uh, iPhone 7 and 8, or 7 and 8 Plus, but this happens to be a 6. I've got an iPhone 6 and it fits in the 7 and 8 case. So even if you've got an older phone like me and you got a 6, you can still get a case for them. So I'm going to work on some other ones later. I may work on one like this for this Ram t-shirt that matches this patriotic Ram t-shirt. All this stuff you can find down in the description. All right, let's get into the Rams. What do we do? Well, my son-in-law had the opportunity to sell some. So we brought all the Rams in. Some were keeping for the breeding Rams and some were selling. We had to get them shots, we had to get them vaccinated, we had to get everything for them so they could get the health papers. See, we're here in Nebraska. Uh, these were all going down to, down by, on the, in Indiana, but it's on the Indiana-Kentucky border. There's a high fence hunting operation. So basically what my son-in-law's done over the summer, he's picked up a few rams here or there where he could get them, find some on an ad or something like that. So he's bought a few and we had, I think there was 13 out in the pen totally. Uh, plus, he's got some smaller rams that were born earlier this year. So we brought them all in, vaccinated, shots, sorted them out, put the breeders and the lot smaller ones he's keeping back in the pasture. Totally, we ended up loading eight of these on a truck. And they ended up making a trip from Nebraska down to, uh, like I said, the Indiana-Kentucky border down for a high fence hunting operation. My son-in-law took him down. He said, I'll tell you, that's not a really huge place. But he said, it is just straight up and straight down. He said, you shoot one and it ends up down the bottom. He said, I don't know how you're supposed to get that thing back up to the top. He said, it's really looked like a really kind of a neat place to go do some high fence hunting operations. But anyway, that's the first part of the deal we did. We took the rams, we got them sorted out. Second thing, we brought the hay in. We got our first load of hay in this year. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, no rain, pastures are terrible not a lot of hay. Guys are getting half of what they should get. I was afraid what we were going to get into this year. So far on this load, we brought in 10 bales here. We've got nine more round bales coming. Now that load is for myself, for my son-in-law, for his sheep, and for my daughter who raises dairy goats. Uh, they're about 1,800 pound bales. We paid 120 bucks a piece for them. That's alfalfa. So considering the conditions this year, we figured that's ah, not too bad. We kind of felt pretty decent about that. We've also got some round bales that we picked up. They're smaller, but they're grass bales. Uh, we got some of those we were able to pick up for like 80 bucks a bale. So we didn't think that was too bad. Basically, in my situation, I've still left the sheep out here on the pasture, but boy, I'll tell you what, there ain't a lot left. They're, they're picking some, but what I'm doing now is I'm gonna start with the grass bales and I do have a little bit left of a round bale from last spring. I bring them in, I'm gonna give them some grain and now I've started feeding just a little bit of hay. So I'm giving them a little bit of hay in the evening. As I said, I'll use up the old round bale I had, the last of it. Then I'm gonna go with the grass stuff for now and I'm gonna save my round bales of alfalfa for the winter. When it's cold, when it's real cold in the winter, I want as much protein as they can get at that time. We'll also be later into after breeding and, and they're lactating they're getting ready, I guess, uh, to lamb. I want as good a feed as I can get. So at that period of time, uh, I want that alfalfa hay. So, hey, sun came out, it was cloudy for a minute. Might have the camera pointed the right direction, but that's okay, we're about to move. I wanna go in and show you, I've made some changes for the catch pen. All right, catch pen changes. Catch pen is back behind you, the alleyway that goes out to the lot. 
is this way where I was bringing the sheep in. Uh, if you haven't seen some of the earlier videos I've mentioned, I like solid walls in your catch pins, at least six, eight feet tall. Uh, but main thing is solid. If you've got wire fence, the sheep just somehow seem to think they can keep running through it. They're just going to keep hitting it head on. And here was a standard gate. I had a four foot tall gate. It was a wire gate. And if we didn't get them all the way back to the catch pen, then every once in a while someone would come and they just, they'd hit it and they'd nail it. So, made a change. Had a lot of used steel, so it's not clean. But for now, the regular gate has been replaced by a six foot solid. I even put a hole in it so I can reach through from the other side. You can open it both ways, but I'm not even going to give a sheep a hole. It's got to be on it so the sheep can't even see through it. Now we're not going to have a problem. Now I, I need to put a little dirt in here to level it out. I got to get a bobcat in, throw a little dirt in to pick it up so they don't try the nose underneath it either. But we're up to a solid gate now. I don't think we'll have the problem we used to have as we're getting them in. Which leaves me with the outside and this contraption. And let me show you what I did here. All right, so what I'm left with is this spot right here. As I'm bringing sheep up, I've got this spot as they're heading here to the catch pin. Doors here is usually closed. I did not want to make this solid. I want to be able to go in and out. I have double doors here. I open up. I can bring stuff through here. I can come back and forth and bring a bobcat through here. My golf cart where I'm hauling hay or stuff like that. So I want to leave this open. But the problem is when you leave it open, then it's... You're, the sheep's going to hit it. They're, they're going to be open. I think they're going to try to go through it. This, before I put the top on this, this was a sliding door, and I had to take the sliding door off when I built the top. Then I came back with just swinging double doors. I made them smaller. Well, I still had the railing. So I have mounted the railing right here, and then I happen to have a 12 foot gate. So I took some two bys. Put some two bys on the gate, bolted them on, hang it from the uh, railing. Then I happen to have some 4x4 four four mesh wire. I stapled that on, so now I've got it. It's sheet proof. They can't go through it there. But I still wanted to make it solid. But if I made it totally solid, it would be real dark in here. And the problem with that is, well, I'll tell you what. You, can, you want to know what the cost is of riots and protests, even if they're not happening when you're at? A 4 by 8 sheet of 7 16 OSB should be running about 7 bucks. Last time I looked, it's now over $19. So if I put three sheets of OSB on this gate, cover 12 foot, it's going to cost me 60 bucks. And I said, I ain't spending that much. Plus, it's going to be pitch dark in here no matter how much you're lighting. Well, guess what? I happen to have a white tarp laying around. So I took a white tarp. I hook that over the wire. Now I've got a solid gate. Didn't cause me anything to do. And in this situation, we just bring it in. I close the whole thing up. I get enough light through that. It's not dark, so that's good. I can still add a few lights. But I now have a solid wall that the sheep won't try to go through. And I can still open and close it easily. So anytime I want to go in and out, I can always go in and out. So kind of a put things together. Uh, but hey, if you watch enough of my stuff, you know I do a lot of stuff that way. So, but at least in this situation, I had the gate, had the two by sixes, had the wire, had the railing. I didn't cost me anything and I got it all said and done. So, all right. Oh, one thing. Uh, if you're kind of new to this, we're getting into fall. Fall's getting here. September's right around the corner. Matter of fact, it might be September by the time you see this. The other day I was moving sheep around and moving them down to put them down to pasture. And I happened to put them pasture next to Max. And I had a ewe that was in season and she was standing right next to the fence. She wouldn't leave. And she was standing on that side. And if she wanted to wait a little, she came right back again. And I thought, well, I'm going to have to do something probably. And by the time I looked out the window, and Max was getting a little frustrated, Max was just bam right into the fence and bam right into the fence. And 
And I thought that wasn't my best fence in that area anyway, so I ran out there real quick and I got them out. And I thought, okay, we can't put anybody next to anybody this time of year. That's what you're going to start seeing in the fall. These rams are they're just starting to think about it. So if you haven't had sheep before, if this is going to be your first coming into fall and breeding season, get ready because those rams are going to start acting a little bit weird. They're going to start acting a little funny. And I thought old Max was going to take my fence out if I couldn't get it moved, get him out of there, or get the ewes out of there. So now the ewes stay out in the big pasture as far away from Max as we can. That's all for today. Hey, don't forget, t-shirt, phone cover, uh, that issue, or the book, anywhere, look down in the description. Otherwise, thanks for sticking with me. Subscribe to the channel if you would. Hope to see you again real soon.